Hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see you. Good morning. Um, today, we're going to be talking about working conjure at your ancestor altar. The series of the, the series of three classes that will be offered on the platform Crowdcast. Um, this is the outline for the class, and we're going to walk through it really quickly. Um, for those who are interested in partaking in the class, I want you to know what you're partaking in. Your relationship with your ancestors is an act of reciprocity, meaning the more that you uplift the spirit of your ancestors, the more you are uplifted. And in truth, both of you and your ancestors are the same. They are the memory that exists within your Moving blood. On. Um, right. From the introduction, there's an ancestor prayer. So before I get into classes, I like to start off with the ancestor prayer. Before I do a whole lot, before I do anything, honestly, if it's readings or workings or anything with people, I start off with the prayer. I want to make for sure, I want to make certain that spirit is truly there. And I want to consciously um, invite spirit into the space. And I want to invite spirit into the session that I'm having, if it's a class or if it's a reading. And so we go through an ancestor prayer. From there, we go into about who do and the ancestors place in it. Um, uh, for those who don't know, hoodoo is all about ancestral veneration, and we are talking about the spirit of uh, and captured people. So that's really important to understand. Um, I think that hoodoo is being whitewashed right now, and so I think the the foundation of the tradition is being lost for some people. I'm here to tell you that we're not going to be um, skipping over things like um, the influence of culture or race in the tradition. Um, I'm an African American man, so you should um, be able to put together that I'm going to be talking about um, race and culture within the tradition because it is the tradition. Um, so if you thought that um, that's something that you wouldn't hear about in this class, then um, you, were, you were mistaken, all right? And so from there we go to... Uh, and so I'm saying that because we're, we need to talk about the ancestors place and who do root work and conjure. <laughs> um, um, and the ancestors place and who do root work and conjure is the very foundation of the tradition itself. Um, we I've spent years talking about how to build an ancestor altar. If you go to crescentcityconjure.us on the blog post, there's a step by step process process of how to build an ancestor altar. I haven't talked much about doing spiritual work at your ancestor altar, although I get class, I get calls about it all the time, and I get people who walk into the shop asking questions about how to do spiritual work at your ancestor altar all the time. So it inspired me to do a class about how to do spiritual work at your ancestor altar. And yes, you absolutely can and should. Your ancestors should be involved in all your spiritual work since they are the foundation of the work itself. All right. Uh, from there, I want to go to uh, uh, how the ancestors um, work at your altar, how they become the power source of the work, why they are the power source of the work, and how to really track that at your altar and how to track that within uh, yourself. So hello. another thing that I want to talk about that I don't hear people talking about very often are the types of ancestors that you have. So ancestors is an umbrella term, but they do, but there are more specific groups of ancestors, which is really important. And another thing I want to discuss is um, how your ancestors speak to you, because that's been a topic that's been coming up. Sometimes your ancestors speak to you individually, meaning that grandma this, grandma grandpa that um, speak to you individually. Um, but your ancestors can also speak to you um, in simultaneous ways as, as a group of, um, as a group of, uh, uh, of spirits. And their wisdom sounds different. All right. Their wisdom sounds different depending on what's happening. If it's an individual ancestor, then they're going to give you their individual wisdom, meaning that if you, you know, are going through something tough at the time and all the other ancestors agree that uncle whoever can speak to you and uncle whoever is a roughneck, then that's the type of information you're going to get. Sometimes they all speak simultaneously and their voices are not as distinct um, and their wisdom is uh, more generational than it is specific to the individual. All right. And so you have to understand understand how to speak to your ancestors in that way. All right. So from there, we're going to go into daily practice because people just want to have a, I get people want to have an ancestor altar, but they don't know, they don't really know how to work their ancestor altar, which is what we're discussing. We're discussing how to work your ancestor altar. Um, so, uh, that is daily practice or, um, 
how to have a schedule of practice, um, how to sit down with a with a pen and paper and a journal, and what to do at your ancestor altar on a daily um, on a daily basis. So I've had the, this one person told me I really want to learn who to work and conjure. I really want to be my ancestor altar, but it seems very simple, and it seems like I've reached the top of what I'm able to learn concerning this. Um, and I said, wow, you know what I'm saying? I guess no one's told you that it can go quite deep and no one's really giving you the instruction to know how to follow that particular path. And so um, we'll be discussing how to create a schedule, a daily uh, schedule and what that looks like so that you can go a little further at your ancestor altar. We'll talk about how to care for your ancestor altar because that's another thing that has come up. Uh, All right. So from daily practice, we go to conversation. So for those who are unfamiliar, we talk a whole lot about actually hearing the voice of your ancestors. So audible, hearing the voice of your ancestors. There are lots of different ways to hear your ancestors other than audibly. Some people smell scents of their ancestors, their cigar, their perfume. Some people get ringing in their ears. Some people get dreams. We'll be discussing all of that so that you know how to communicate with your ancestors in a way that works for you. Um, And this will these will be interactive classes and they will be on archive and so you will be able to ask questions in real in real so, time okay. uh, after conversation we need to talk about tools that you can use in the conversation so that's going to be um, things like bones and playing cards and tarot cards and stuff like that the real point of any practitioner is to have a true and authentic connection uh, with spirit uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of my experience in life has been guided by my ancestors um uh you know I don't think that I'm more or less special than anybody else. But what I will say is that I display great faith and trust in my ancestors and I follow their steps. They tell me where they want me to go and then I have the faith to follow that direction. And the truth is that they're always right. And if I was to follow my own intuition, I wouldn't be in this place at all. I'd be somewhere completely different. And so I, what I'm really trying to tell people is like, follow the path of, have faith and follow the path of your ancestors because they're not leading you wrong. They're not leading you wrong. You, you do need to interact with them in a, in a, in a strong way. And the more you interact with them, the more they're going to be able to, to, to interact with you because you are the conduit. You are the telephone. They can only talk to you as hard as you are listening to them. And so you need to increase the amount that you're listening to them in order to hear them. They're not going to I will say that some people do have just an undeniable natural connection to their ancestors. And no matter what they do, their ancestors are going to just be yelling at them forever, you know. But most people don't. Most people are are going to have to work on their connection. Um, so after we talk about dance, possession, um, moving in the physical world, we got to talk about moving in the physical world, okay? So moving in the physical world means once you are so involved in this spiritual landscape, it's difficult sometimes to maintain the same um, focus, um, to maintain the same focus, um, in the physical world to still be as, um, rooted in the physical world. So we have to talk about how do you move in the physical world while you're receiving messages from your ancestors, while you're recognizing all these spiritual movements, how do you maintain full connection here? If you have a foot in both worlds. And so we need to discuss balance. All right. After we discuss all this conversation, communication, we need to discuss balance as a whole. All right.